I'm on the edge of South Africa's largest wildlife sanctuary, the Kruger National Park, where I'll be learning the rudiments of being a ranger. Also tonight, Kirsty's on a luxury train journey through southern Spain aboard the Andalus Express. Kevin joins the hordes visiting the small but very popular Greek island of Kos. Lata Sharma crosses the channel to Guernsey. And on the day that Paul McCartney received his knighthood at Buckingham Palace... It's a long way from a little terrace in Liverpool. John Holdsworth goes on a Beatles pilgrimage to Liverpool. Bush Lodge is quite impressive, doesn't it? Yes, very nice. Unfortunately, we're only checking in here. We're off to a tent at camp. Come on. Mama, Mama. Mama. Well, it might not have the elegance of the terrace and bar of Bush Lodge, but this is where the action is. Of course, being in the middle of the African bush has its pros and its cons. The accommodation, as you can see, is very basic. You have to share with three others. And the plumbing is fairly primitive. Morning, Sue. Morning, the showers. I know you're here to have fun and enjoy the holiday, but I want you all to remember there's going to be a lot of hard work involved as well. The course is going to cover a lot of different aspects. We're going to be using the rifle, learning to shoot, driving the Land Rover off-road, a lot of lectures involved, doing a lot of walks. Then Pete. One thing I think is very important for you all to remember is that we're out here in the bush, there are dangerous animals around. This camp itself is not fenced. We have had wild animals through in the camp before, so just be very careful at all times. My course mate Peter and I were learning to follow rhino tracks. Okay. You see, these tracks look uh, very, very fresh. Yeah. You can feel the, the mud. Oh, yeah. This is down. really wet, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it looks so easy at the time. Off-road driving lessons, a <laughs> rather steep <sighs> challenge. He's there. Well, that trail led us to the rhino in the end. Can he sense that we're here, Mishak? Yeah. Way, we got him. <laughs> well, hey. a bit of help from Mishak. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm Mishak. Thanks, yeah. brilliant. over there, something grey. Are you waving at the animals or pointing at them? Sorry. Jill, and while you're spotting the animals, you mustn't forget to watch the road for tracks as well. Also, Jill, don't forget to look up in the tree so that you can see the leopard kill. Oh, Rob, here's the lion tracks. <coughs> there is a pride of lion in the area with uh, one female and three cubs, so it's very likely from them. The advantage of staying on a private game reserve is that you can follow the tracks off-road to locate the most spectacular game, and you'll get all the big five here, lion, leopard, rhino, buffalo, and elephant. And just when we were about to give up... The first time we went out, it was extremely difficult to find the animals, and uh, I was getting a bit disappointed to mm. start with. But then, uh, then after a while, you, you realise that they're not just going to be everywhere, and then that's sort of that's not how you actually see it, maybe on the TV. And, you, and then you appreciate that they've actually had to really track these animals down. The Land Rovers aren't seen as a threat to the animals. As long as you sit fairly still, you can get very close. Sometimes, just a little too close for comfort. <laughs> Even though the Game Ranger course is a more basic safari holiday, it doesn't mean to say that you miss out on all those wonderful safari rides, the very important sundowners, and of course, those stories. 
pulled up alongside Rob, the track lifted his light ever so slightly, and in the light we caught the reflection of Lion's eyes, and the pride of 11 or I think 12 lines, 14, 14 lines, line crept up on Robbie and his guests having their drinks. It was a really amazing sight. <laughs> on a modern safari, <laughs> where conservation is the name of the game, there are no trophies of hunting glories as there were in the past. Your souvenirs are the photographs and stories you take home. The best time to see game is early morning and late evening, when the sun isn't so hot and when the animals are at their most active. Oh, look, 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 baby impala, look. Now, you may have thought that it's dog eat dog in the bright lights of the big city, but in the bush, it's every lioness for herself. Just two hours to the west of Sabi Sabi is the Portuguese-styled Caso do Sol, a hotel where you can shake the dust of the safari from your hair. Well, isn't it a lovely day? Oh. With its own grounds, gardens and stables, you can ride, hike, play tennis or simply relax by the pool, the ideal après safari experience. The real bonus is the hotel's proximity to the Transvaal Drakensberg, a chance to experience some of South Africa's impressive landscapes. 1,700 meters above sea level, this is known as God's window. Just look at his front garden. Bleda River Canyon and the three rondavels are among the country's most scenic wonders. And in the evenings, over those sundowners at the hotel, the temptation to wax lyrical about recent adventures is too hard to resist. The tracker suddenly just stopped. His eyes just went wild. He suddenly realized that we were on to an amazing find. He suddenly, he said, Jill, Jill, just stop, stand still. He said, walk backwards, walk backwards. What is it? What is it? Slow. That nine-day trip to South Africa cost from £1,460, staying for three nights on full board at the Sabi Sabi Game Reserve and four nights half board at Casa de Sol Hotel. The price includes the ranger training, scheduled flights, transfers and car hire for the second part of the holiday. A weekend in Liverpool. Got the clothes. Got the transport. Got the Beatles. Waiting to take me away to spy on the house where Cynthia lived with John in 1962. I'm a gog at Ringo's humble birthplace in Toxteth. Yes, this tour is a two-hour continuous photo opportunity. The city becomes a museum. And as we visit George's house, I can't help wondering what came first, the goldfish or the bowl. Think about it. So, madam, why are you here? Because I love the Beatles. Why not? Let me take you down, because I'm going to Strawberry Field. Where the gate remains firmly locked. There's nothing to see, but plenty to feel, etc., etc. Now, if you've never heard of the Beatles, then this place won't mean that much to you. In which case, go and ask your dad. Or perhaps your mother should know. Get it? <laughs> Onwards and upwards to the mecca that is Paul's teenage home, 20 Falkland Road. A terraced house? No, a shrine. And finally, stuffed to the gills with nostalgia, we end up at the Cavern Club and a band called Up and Running who sound nothing like the Beatles. Though later that night, the same place... Won't you please turn on the air conditioning? It's big, it's round, it's the Atlantic Tower Hotel and it's the location for my two-night package, which includes on Sunday 
the Beatles Story Exhibition down at the Albert Dock. A walkthrough museum charting the Fantastic Four's career. Or should that be Favourite Four? And this, of course, is the actual plane that the Beatles used when they went to America. In New York, the temperature is 32 Beatle degrees. Imagine you were them. Imagine you were him. Imagine you were John. Now, I don't know what it is about this room. Call it schmaltz, call it tacky. I'm sentimental, so I call it lump in the throat time. A bit of fresh air, I think. The River Mersey, the ferry experience. And while you're wondering whether I'm going to use that song to end the film, I'd like to show you that it wasn't just the Beatles who made this city great. They weren't the first Scousers to dream of foreign... Sh oh, hello. Here it comes. But hey... What's another pop cliché between friends? That Beatles weekend costs £89 and includes two nights bed and breakfast at the four-star Atlantic Tower Hotel and entry to the Cavern Club, the Magical Mystery Tour, the Ferry Across the Mersey Cruise and the Beatles Story. It's available from May until October. Closer to Turkey than to Athens, this small Greek island has had a very turbulent history. It's been occupied by the Crusaders, the Turks and the Italians. But today's invasion is led by the package tourist. Kevin Woodford joined the throng in Coz to find out why it's such a popular holiday destination. If your idea of a Greek holiday is quiet whitewashed villages, tavernas and little old Greek ladies, well, forget it. This week, I'm on the island of Kos, heading for the ultra-commercialised Kodamana. There's a guy, there's a guy filling a donkey. <laughs> Is she expensive to run? <laughs> Cordamina is fairly compact and not very Greek. In fact, you could say it's where Benidorm meets Greece. English breakfasts, burger bars, and all the other usual tourist attractions that are a hit with us Brits. Welcome to Cardamina. Everything you want. You find in Kadamana whatever you like. The hotel is no sleepy taverna either. A typical comfortable three star, which would be at home anywhere along the Med. Now, it would be unfair to say that Cordamina is totally without a Greek feel to it. It used to be a fishing village, and if you look hard enough, you'll find some decent Greek food. I did at the Christophilus restaurant. How are you? Good to see you. Nice to see you. Now, listen, what, what I want to know is, is this all fresh? All fresh. Where does it come from? All fresh. Look at the thing where it is, and you ask me where that one from. <laughs> <laughs> so it's local, it's here. Oh, it's here okay, yeah. let's have a look at it then, right? Okay. Right. But the one that interests me is this little fellow here. Look at that. Oh, this that is. Body. Of the Bulbi. Oh, yes. Is that right? Yes, you got it right. Of the What I really want, I'll tell you what I'd like, is I'd like a little bit of everything, yes. but a lot of Of the Bulbi. I wanted a little piece of everything. I didn't want the whole fish. This is a little piece of everything. This is, this is, this is enough to feed the whole of Acton. <laughs> we try the octoputi, first of all. Octoputi. Shall I 
give him a skull sandal. <laughs> For a taste of more Greek culture, head for Kos Town, only half an hour's drive away. It's got a fortress, ancient Roman archaeology, Greek priests, good shopping, and as any good doctor will tell you, the tree where Hippocrates, the father of medicine, allegedly taught. Those seeking adventure should get on the boat to the island of Nisaros. Three quarters of an hour sail away and a short coach journey. And we're there. The biggest volcano in Greece. Apparently the volcano is now dormant. But walking across the crater, it seemed pretty hot to me. Now this is what I call cooking al fresco. The steam from these blowholes comes out at a temperature of 90 degrees, a perfect temperature, in fact, for cooking eggs and bacon. Now if you'd like to have a go at this, then I suggest you hurry, because the next eruption and this volcano is due within 12 years. Oh, I think I've spoke too soon. As you can see, Colomina is a very lively place, but the man there has decided that the curfew of 12 o'clock is too late, and so he's trying to make it 11 o'clock, and I'm being chased by the police. Goodbye. Fortunately, there are two clubs that are exempt where you can party on till the early hours without the party pooper mayor. A week's bed and breakfast at the Chris Murray Hotel in Cardamina in Cos costs from £311 this summer, including flights and transfers. Car hire is extra and costs £39 a day. An island close to France in geography and culture. VAT free, virtually crime free, and you don't need a passport to get there. Guernsey in the Channel Islands is part of the British Isles, but as Lata Sharma discovered, it has a character all of its own. The guards and guns of Castle Cornet have protected Guernsey for centuries. Cannon ready. Cannon ready. Fire. Cannons, castles and the military aren't quite what many of us associate Guernsey with. Peace, quiet and wholesomeness would be more the picture, I'd say. But that's the strange thing about Guernsey. You don't always get what you bargain for. St. Peterport is the pint-sized capital. Like the rest of Guernsey, it's neat, pretty and quaint. And it has another feature typical of the island. It's all too easy to get lost. The town also holds its secrets. Billions of pounds flood through Guernsey, never leaving a ripple. Behind the brass plates and darkened windows, the fortunes of some of the world's richest people are discreetly managed to avoid prying eyes. For most of us, though, high finance seems a million miles away in the lanes that thread along the rugged coast. It can all feel cosy and familiar, but don't be fooled. This isn't Britain. Hello. Hello. Could you tell me the way to the little chapel, please? Which are? It's what Fiat would need. If a proper and I shall have a petite route. Guernsey people are friendly, but never tire of demonstrating their independence from the mainland. It's an island of extremes, and that usually means extremely small. The so-called Little Chapel is just that, holding a congregation of just five, built by monks from broken pottery, it's like walking through a jewel.
Nearby lies Guernsey's darker side. The last witch was exposed here just 80 years ago, and some believe that witches still meet at this stone circle. But if midnight magic's not to your taste, nightlife at the hotel is a peaceful alternative. You can have a quiet meal in the hotel restaurant. Or you can have a quiet drink in the bar. You can get lost in the corridors. This is Guernsey, after all. Or you can just take the easy option and have an early night. You can't ignore the sea here, and a 20-minute ferry trip takes you to Guernsey's most popular tourist spot. It's the tiny island of Herm. Head of the handful of residents is Adrian Hayward, whose many duties include being part-time vicar and even the island's jailer. Oh, this is a pretty disgusting, dingy, dark cubbyhole. What's this supposed to be? No, we think it's wonderful. This is our Herm Island prison, the smallest unused prison in the world, according to the Guinness Book of Records. We're actually a very peaceful, orderly island, and I'm the special constable, and I make sure it stays that way. Guernsey is a fortress. When the Nazis invaded, they built a ring of bunkers around the coast. And if you venture in, the echoes of the past still resound. Guernsey's now a peaceful place. But if you look hard enough, you can expect to find the unexpected. A week's bed and breakfast staying at the four-star Hotel Hugues du Pommier on Guernsey costs from £341 this summer. The price includes flights and transfers. And details of all the holidays on tonight's show are on CFAX, page 618. You want to travel through Spain, but you don't fancy the dust of the road or the hassle of a coach tour, then a luxury train could be the solution. The Al Andalusia glides between Seville, Cordoba and Granada and it combines the elegance of the 1920s with the technology of the 1990s. Well, Kirsty Young didn't have to be asked twice. And she hopped aboard the Andalusian Express in Seville. Seville station is the most modern of places full of trains that look like planes and get there almost as fast. But even in this high-tech terminus, there's still a trace of romance. Departing shortly from Platform 11 will be my mobile home for the next few days. Oh. Well, if you're thinking that this cabin looks pretty small, you're right. But just look at the quality of the surroundings. These inlaid Art Deco panels are the real McCoy crafted back in the days when travelling in style really meant something. Compact, isn't it? Now, the train really is like something out of an Agatha Christie novel, but what sort of characters are attracted to the Al Andalus? Clearly travellers for whom A to B is no longer quite enough. First stop, Cordoba. Andalus was the Arabic name for the southern part of Spain, ruled by the Moors for several hundred years until its reconquest by the Catholic kings. Cordoba, with its fascinating mix of Jewish, Arab and Christian cultures, was the result. This is a gastronomic tour as well. Only breakfast happens on board, whilst the rest of the time is spent on huge meals in restaurants, and that's included in the price. Gracias. Oh well, here goes. Hmm, the first of many. Later, the train becomes a nightclub, open until the last traveller heads for their bunk, which can be pretty late. And these people are married too. Showers and loos are separate, but there's rarely a queue. And so, to bed in Córdoba, and we wake up in Granada. A 
As the great Spanish poet Lorca once said, Granada is horrible. He loved the Alhambra, though. Well, it's only a few minutes past nine, and I'm one of the first people here. But in a little while, I'll be joined by my fellow travellers from the train and by some of the hundreds of thousands of people that visit this beautiful place every single year. But if you want to really enjoy the peace and tranquility, the very reason that this place was built, then I would advise you to come early, because the peace very soon gets shattered. <laughs> This holiday is undoubtedly a luxury. After all, Andalusia can be experienced much more cheaply by car. But there is something about a train. It was a retirement present for my husband. And, I mean, it's such a thoughtful present. You know, I mean, the, the whole of idea of, of a holiday like this has been great. But worth £1,400 each? I would think it's worth every penny, but it, it is a lot to bite off for five, six days. Next stop, La Bobadilla. Our gruelling gastronomic round continues here with lunch at this very exclusive hotel. <laughs> Food is clearly a very important part of the holiday and each restaurant and menu was both different and original. Well, we've arrived at the spectacularly situated town of Ronda, which lies right at the heart of Andalusia, a suitably impressive place to contemplate the beauty and drama of southern Spain. That trip on the Andalus Express cost from £1,390, including scheduled flights, transfers, five nights aboard the Andalus Express, including meals and, in some cases, wine, one night's bed and breakfast in Seville, and all the sightseeing. The train runs from March to October. There's no holiday programme next week, but in a fortnight, Juliet Morris takes my place when she'll be in the Caribbean on the very chic French island of St. Bart's. Kevin continues his Greek island trawl when he visits the tiny haven of Lipsy. Shankar's on a holiday for heroes, travelling to altitudes of over 10,000 feet on a tour of Peru. And Jenny Hull charters a small yacht to sail around the Balearics. So until next week, it's goodbye from South Africa. Special delivery next tonight on BBC One, it's EastEnders. <laughs>